we stop, we gon' we gon' get it done. Get it when we start, we gon' get it done. Start when we stop, we gon' we gon' get it done. Anthony's rum. Ooh, what's going on everyone? I'm Anthony. You know me as Anthony's World and we are back with another fucking banger of an episode. This is the Living Icon Podcast. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to fucking, that's, that's, that's the name. That's the, the name of it. Podcast. We've been trying to decide the name for this forever. But we have first generation entrepreneur, Mr. Zay Hampton. What up? Man, how are you doing? I'm doing good, brother. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful, man. We, uh, we first met um, at your gala, you know, yeah. for uh, one of your companies called Royal Line. Yes. Um, if you don't mind real quick, just what is Royal Line? Uh, so Royal Line Group is a lifestyle and luxury experience uh, curation company. So, I mean, it's fancy for we just provide the vibes. <laughs> exactly. All right, providing what, all the vibes. Whatever I mean, it is that you need. If I can't do it, I know somebody that can. I love and, that. you know, convenience is everything. So convenience that's what I provide. is 100% everything. Trust me, the vibes. And and look yeah. at me, look at this man. He is vibed out right now. Uh, look look know, at look, he's got I'm the chilling. he got the swag on right now. I love it. I was just actually I know I can't see his shoes, but I was just complimenting they're they're pretty badass. Yeah, I appreciate it. They're pretty it. badass. Man, so what what is uh what is it like being a first generation entrepreneur? What what is that? What does that mean to you? What how much pride do you hold in that too? It means like I get to take all the L's for everybody <laughs> <laughs> behind me. I Legit, love that. Ain't like, that the truth? Which is cool. You know, I've always been a trailblazer and I've always been a leader. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm the one who's always the man with the plan. And, hey, you know, like people get into car accidents and call me before they call their attorney. Damn. It's like, like for what? But it's that responsibility <laughs> that I, you know, that I take on. Yeah, it, you know? that, that happens quite so often. That's, that's what it means to be a first generation entrepreneur. And, and how has it treated you thus far? Uh, it's beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? You don't honest. look beat up. You look you look fresh. Yeah. You look fresh I as mean, fuck. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, the best part about it is the learning. You know, I get to, I be I get to become wiser than my father in a sense because you know I, I he had that. a lot of knowledge, but I took what he gave me and applied it. So that and, makes and put me it wise. and put experience behind it. Yeah, you know, I, I love just, that. I do it. I love that. I love that. So inside of this, how how are you curating these vibes? Like how are you, how are you making these vibes come true? Because um, like you like you said, and I will point this out: convenience is key, and that is a hundred percent facts. It is. Like I don't do anything if it's inconvenient for me. No, like, definitely nothing in my life is inconvenient. I would say, I mean, I just I I pick up on, on what people want mm-hmm. and really fast. So I'm a fast learner. Um, I. I observe what people how they act how they respond to certain things uh and and i just i kind of think for them like i become the brains for a lot of people so whether that's you know in the car rental game because that's how i really stepped into this industry um i knew what i liked and i had to quickly put that aside and realize what other people wanted yeah um so i had to become you know a helper a brain for other people um and that's what i just started doing i started trying to figure out, you know, how can I create something that's exclusive? Everybody wants to feel like they're, you know, exclusive and important. Uh, Oh, absolutely. You know, exploit that in a good way. Oh, absolutely. So I, um, I got something that I want to tell you about, and this is where I first started learning a lot about this industry. I went to Dubai, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, Dubai is like experience fucking central. Like it's all about the experience of going to Dubai. Mm Mm-hmm. But we got there and we had a full on concierge service. Right. Um, to the point of where we didn't even see a bill. Hmm. We would literally That's go dangerous, to a though. restaurant. That's dangerous. It is. <laughs> but we would go to a restaurant mm-hmm. and there would be someone waiting for us at the restaurant after they, they made they got us drivers to drive us there right. they had security which in dubai you don't really need security which i thought was like redundant but yeah, like, one of the is. safest places that you can it go. is but like so they, then they would have someone sitting there waiting for you to finish your dinner wow to then grab the check and here's the thing they didn't take your credit card they put it on their own credit card yeah because they got yours on file exactly so, you know, <laughs> exactly it's but, out of they, sight out of and mind they, and they just send um mm-hmm. and what's crazy is is like how they do it. And that was one of the coolest experiences. So like, and I actually said, Hey, we need something like this in the United States. So, right. you know, I don't know, that might be something you could no, talk I'm into, on, but like I'm that shit that. was crazy. Like, like it was one of the coolest experiences. And, um, like I'm telling you, like they made it super, super special. They made it to where like you got there, mm-hmm. like that people, people were like, Hey, this is who this is. 
Like, no one fucks with them. No one talks with them. No one touches them. Got there. And, like, to the point, like, we didn't even, you didn't you got a bill at the end. Yeah. And, like, the crazy part is, is, like, they, like, all they do is just, you know, obviously charge a percentage up. But it's just, like, you know, a lot of these people, they're, like, it's, like, yeah, they just give me a million dollar retainer a year. Right. They just hand me a million dollars for their pleasure. Hey, and I, I like, wouldn't mind that. You know, that crazy. sounds that sounds like something that I need but to they're incorporate. So in. connected, and that, that was just yeah. a little idea for you because I've been saying that needs. There's something that like that needs to happen in Scottsdale. Yeah. So you seem like the man with the fucking plan. So you need to fucking make that happen. No, and get I out am. There I'm gonna take on that responsibility. I'll do it. I mean, I will be. I will gladly be your first customer. When I went there, it was it was different because I was trying to be like in with the people. Like I wanted to live the lifestyle. I didn't want to like do too much like too much vacation ish uh touristy things like i wanted to make it like a you know an organic experience but and that's always I, fun yeah and I that's always fun it. D- dubai is awesome dubai yeah. is awesome i love it um man that, that's cool that's cool though if you can make that happen here whew, you'll do it so yeah, it's an it's definitely it's an opportunity that i need to capitalize on well while we're on this right now what, what, what can you tell them real quick what's your instagram so they make sure right now while they're into oh, yeah. this video hardcore that they're about to give you a follow tap right in away. zay underscore hampton that's you know short for isaiah but zay underscore hampton and then the business page is royal rentals royal rentals io my royal rentals was taken from somebody in dubai Fucking, fucking Dubai. <laughs> Come on. We were on it first. So so tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get involved in this in this space? Um, so I got into it because I was working in the oil field and like I got what, in when I was you 17. Doing in the oil field. Wait, I hold was, on. Hold on. Where are you from? I'm from Why? Pittsburgh. PA. Because I was say, like, as I say, there is no oil fields around Scott, yeah, so I'm that right two. Now. Yeah, definitely. So I'm from Pittsburgh. Okay. I was playing football. Uh, it just, I started having like real bad migraines, health issues, and it just wasn't the wave anymore. Like Mm -hmm. my dad was just like, look, you know, you got to just give it up. You know, would you rather have your brain or would you rather, you know, keep doing what you're doing basically? So long story short, I was like, all right, bet I want to live the life that I want to live. I want to live like an NFL player, but I don't have to play football to do it. So I started, I always had, you know, a passion for business anyway. So it wasn't that hard. But it was a transition that I made. Uh, my cousin came from Afghanistan. He was a vet, and he was like, hey, look, there's this new booming industry. It's called Marcellus Shell. I was like, what the heck is Marshmallow L? I don't even know <laughs> yeah, what he said. Yeah. Like, I'm like, what? What? He's like, fracking. I'm like, another word that I never heard, frack. Like, what is that? So anyway, it's just a f- another term for oil, the oil field. And I was doing the labor, the labor intensive things, working like 20, 21 hour days, 25 hour days. And we were just in the dirt, in the oil, getting all dirty, being a man. But um, yeah, we were, that's how, what I how was How much doing. did that teach you? Uh, it teach me like worth ethic, like really, really important um, thing for me, especially as an entrepreneur, is just to, you got to get your hands dirty, literally. You got to put the fucking work in. You got to put the work in. So, I mean, it built a lot of character for me. Like, I was definitely a pretty boy, and it was like I had something to prove. So I wanted to stay in the industry longer, and that kind of worked to my advantage. Love that. Um, But I didn't save any of the money that I made there. (laughs) Well, something that happens. But you were young. You know, you said you had something to prove. And um, I want to speak on that real quick because I'm a firm – I'm a very big believer, firm believer in that, like, like, especially in the men, men Mm -hmm. in today's time, like – it's good to have a chip on your shoulder. It is. You need a fucking chip on your shoulder. If you want to do something great, you need to have a chip on your shoulder because if not, then you're not going to be able to push yourself further. Right. Like, the, like, like I promise you, your mind will tell you to quit way before your body will. Mm-hmm. And if you can train your mind and program your mind to just keep going and just keep saying yes, 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 you'll keep going. You'll keep I'm going. Le- I'm learning that concept with these cold plunges. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I hate right? being cold, but it's I, true. Dude, I, I love being cold. I hate being hot. Really? So for me, it's the opposite. Like sauna is for me. No like I'll get in the sauna in like five minutes. I'm like, fuck this shit. But, but that's what they say. Like, it's, all, like it's, not, it's all in your mind. Like, yep, it is. It is. It's all mental. Mm-hmm. And so like I just, you know, if you have a chip on your shoulder, use that to your advantage. That's the real thing that I think most people, most entrepreneurs have. A chip on your shoulder is different from having an ego. Oh, that's, absolutely. That's what people, absolutely. people don't really know how to decipher the two. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, you know, like, like being entitled, feeling too good to do something. That's not yeah. what having a chip on your shoulder means. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just so you guys know what the definition of having a chip on your shoulder yeah, is, it's, it's, it's not it. having a big ego. Yeah. It's proving it to your, it's also proving it to yourself. Right. I love that. I love that. So you were doing, you were pretty much doing the work in the oil field. You were out yeah. there just fucking. I was well, doing the work, the hardest work. What and I mean, like? like we were making good money, but we were paid the least, which is life. You yeah. know, that's how life you is. Usually work people up, working you know? the hardest are getting paid the least. But it was great. I mean, I definitely I'm thankful for it. What was it like, though? Like what really what truly what really was it like? It was it was like being. How uh, long did you do it for? If I'm ask first. Three years, but not fucking, consistently. Not like I, I, I progressed really fast. Like I went from being on sand duty shoveling sand for 18 hours straight like i was on holes uh, and then <laughs> going from that to like working my way into like the data van that's where the engineers are ah. like they're getting paid all the money to sit in the ac i mean we were working in either 120 degrees or minus 30 degrees there was no in between okay so i mean it was extremes on both ends Crazy. um but i did it for like three years and i just you know at at a point I was like, this, this isn't for me. Yeah. And that turning point was when I realized like I'm sitting here working 18, 20 hours every single day. I'm missing out on life. And like, what if I invested this time into myself? Like, wh what could I do? And I was always extremely confident, like in whatever I put my mind to, I could do it. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, okay, I'm gonna put my mind to it. I just have to put my time into it. Love and, that. You know, Love that. Yo, let's, let's caption that one right there. That was fucking, that was a banger. Hey. That was a banger, dog. <laughs> that was a banger. So what was the, uh, what was the first like step? Was there a, was, was there a book you read or podcast you heard? What was it that after that, like, well, I guess that would have been, never mind you, what, the podcasts weren't really around there. <laughs> um, but like, what was yeah. that like first so thing So this that was happened? like 2013. I'd say it was a combination of like my grandmother dying while I was working and like I hadn't seen her in uh -huh. years. So it was like, it was kind of, hit you. that in was face. like my, uh, my epiphany, like, wow, like, you know, I didn't realize it's been like three years, everybody else is experiencing this. It was a sudden death too. So it wasn't like she was old, she was in her fifties. So Sorry to hear that, man. you know, no, it was, but that's what I, I mean, not, that's not what I needed, but that was something that I used as motivation as a chip on my, that was a chip on my mm -hmm. shoulder was like, you know what, like this is, I'm exchanging my time. You know, I'm putting, I'm losing time with my family. I'm losing time, you know, with my friends. Like, I'm not even, I'm only 17. Like, what am I so motivated to work for? Like, money, yeah. that's when I realized, like, money's not everything. To me, at the time, it was. Not even close. Yeah. You have to go through a lot of that to experience that. Like, I, I said all the time, like, money's not real. Yeah. Once you can adapt that mindset and believe that mindset, it, you know, your whole perspective on everything right. will just change. But I didn't answer your question. What it was like in oh, the oil field my bad. was being keep, we'll keep like an <laughs> extremely high paid servant. Like I, I felt like I was in prison. It was all felons and Marines. I was the only civilian. Like they called me the pretty boy civilian. Like that was my name, civilian. I was the only really? like, person that wasn't either from the military, like coming back from Iran or, you know, on a, on a tour or coming straight out of prison. So like to them, that was like their, that was their home. Like they yeah. really didn't, couldn't they adapt, you know what I mean? And it was deep, like it was deeper than just, you know, working like they, they couldn't fit back into regular society. So that's where they felt like accepted. That's where they felt comfortable and they were making crazy money. So it was like, you know, for them, it was the best of both worlds. But me, it was just like, how how much longer can I endure this? Yeah. So I was kind of putting myself through a test. Like, you know, the average turnover time is two weeks. Two months is like, oh, you made it. So really? I was just like, let me keep doing this until I felt like I've had enough. And I had enough when my grandma passed away. And then when I was sitting there and I was like, you know, this is, I'm wasting too much time. Like I'm done. I had an older guy was like, why are you doing this? He's like, you got other businesses. I see, you know, you have something about you that like, you don't belong here. This will always be here. Go do what you want to do. And you're already like a veteran in this industry because you've been doing it for two years. So anytime you want, you can come back and make as much money as you want. Go live your dreams. And I was like, bet. Well, I'm out of here. <laughs> You're right. I, he probably didn't. I, he probably didn't mean that. Like my, 
my boss was probably pissed at him because I never came back. You know, I just, really? was, I went home that night. I just drove home. Like we were like five hours away. I wasn't even allowed to drive. I probably could have got fine, but like we had these crew vans and I took that to, took that home. Like I'm out. Seriously. I took the crew van from the hotel. I mean, I told them where it was at. I dropped it back off at like our location back in PA and I was just gone. I never came back. Damn, that's crazy. That's, that's like the definition of like never looking back. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, bro. I yeah. love that. I love that. So um, how hard has it been transitioning from that to owning your own business? Because you talked about, you know, working, you know, 18, 20 hours a day. Um, you switched one 18, 20 hour a day to another for another uh, 24 hour that. a day. Yeah. A lot of people think that, you know, working a nine to five is not it. It is for, you know, people. There's there's a, a role for everybody in mm -hmm. this world. Like you need, you need workers and you need bosses. It's not, it's not for everybody, but you leave the nine to five to work 24, eight, you know? And that's yep. what a lot of people yep. don't realize. It's like, this is not, this is not like I'm gonna work two hours. Like you're, you're going to have issues yeah. not working. This is, this, sounds is yeah. crazy. this is, this is not for the faint of heart. It's not, not at all. Not at all. So for people, that are looking to, you know, make some type of different change in mm -hmm. their life. What do, where do you, where would you recommend them? And because like, like, I mean, some people, you know, how, you said you were, you were 19, right? Well, right? I was 17. So by this time I was like 19, 19 when 20. I started. Okay. The some people might have a little bit of a different role now, you know, in their life. Mm -hmm. They might have kids, married and all that stuff. So like, right. what would you, what would you offer the people that are that age that mm -hmm. are older, you know, 25, 30, 35, that want to make a career change. And then maybe the people that are younger that are like, like, like that were in your shoes. What would you offer? I mean, any, to the anybody? older people, you know, you know, your situation better than anybody else. So it's definitely like, you have to have a balance. Like, I know it sounds so cliche. I heard so many, you know, other motivational speakers, so many other entrepreneurs and successful people saying like, you know, Hey, like, you know, my business caused issues in my marriage. It, you know, it got me divorced. It, you know, I lost my family. I lost my friends. Like, and I just was always that person in, in all areas of life that was like, not me. That's yeah. not going to happen to me. Yeah. Like, okay, I know that happened to you, but I'm not going to be like that. And it happens. It's like, you know, I feel like being, owning your own business and being an entrepreneur is like being in the middle of the ocean with a strong tide like you don't realize how strong that tide is you can't see it it's something that you can't see you just keep drifting further and further off if you don't correct it yeah and i think that's how you know like a business is is like you just have to watch out for the tides wherever you're at in life whether you're 19 and you're close to the shore or if you're 25 and you're far out like just be aware of that tide and and the crazy part about this is using that same expression um or that analogy is that um if you do it right, sometimes the tide can roll with you. Yeah, it can. And you, if you can catch that moment that you can realize, oh, shit, the tide's rolling with me, and you ride that fucking wave. Right, it can it take can, you where you're trying to go. It, and fast. Right. But it's also about positioning yourself and also changing maybe where you want to go, too, sometimes. Mm -hmm. so that was, that was a sometimes good one. where you think you want to go is not where you actually want to be at. Yep. Or where you need to be. Right, yeah. And so that's probably, like, the best analogy for a business is, like, you – you have to kind of roll with the tide in all all areas yeah. of it. I, I call uh, CEOs firefighters. Yeah. They're literally just putting out fires all day long. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, I woke up this morning at 6 o'clock, fucking fire here, fire there, fire there. And I was like, fuck. I was like, yeah. this is what it's like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you this have to have it. levels of, of, you know, like separation. You know, there's always like anybody successful, really successful is not going to be one phone call away. Because you can't. No. Or, or you're going to be self-destructive <clears throat> or you're just not, you're too accessible. I, I tried that for a long time. Um, I tried it for like four years and it fucking, it took a toll on me mentally, my mm. body, physically, like everything about it. Even me. in your business, it takes yes, a toll because then like you don't get the respect that you need. You don't get the time you get, to yourself. You're also your trying family. to, you're also not allocating the right time to each problem right so a problem you might fix 80 percent of the way and you're like oh well i fixed majority of the problem 
and then you leave 20% and that problem now becomes like fucking 200% bigger because you didn't fix it all the way. 100%. And so like, so for me, like this last few years, what we've been really doing is hiring a ton of people. Like we've been hiring yeah. you people, gotta manager, you have to delegate, you have to. You gotta I don't be care willing to make less money to get more done and then the money will come. Exactly. It's like, yeah. And it's a, it's a hard one to realize, especially for entrepreneurs yeah. because like everyone starts off as an entrepreneur just trying to make the money. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you don't realize like, like, you know, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm a high school dropout. Like, I don't know what it's like to fucking go to school to run a business. Right. You know what I, mean? I don't fucking, I don't know. I have, to this day, I don't know how to run a business. Like, I have no fucking idea. You learn from what experience, huh? That's it. Yeah, I, experience is, like, when I was in the oil field, they would hire somebody who had six months of experience over somebody who had 50 years of a degree. Like, they don't care. They're like, look, you have to live it and be in it in, in order for us to even feel comfortable. Like, we don't care. You can't read this in a book like this is different and i feel like that's how it is being an entrepreneur like there's no blueprint for it everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face yeah there's no blueprint for this business for owning a business yep that's the truth that's how it goes yeah um so so when you're doing this i i I see a lot of stuff you know talking about so did you buy the vehicles yourself and and Mm -hmm. the experiences or are you actually because there's a lot of companies that take other people's vehicles and other people's do you do both well, now I'm doing both just because I got, it I got came a to van sitting out there. That needs yeah, to be no, used. really, that's what I'm transitioning to. But it took me owning all of these things myself mm-hmm. in order to know how to manage other people's. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where a lot of people go wrong. Is like they're trying to jump into like let me manage somebody else's stuff when they don't even. If you, you know don't know what it's like to own it, yeah. if you don't know how much these things cost or what you're dealing with, like you're not going to be able to handle it in the appropriate way. So like, how can you manage somebody yeah. else's assets if you never managed your own? That's like one of the reasons why I hate wealth managers. Yeah. I fucking hate wealth managers because For all these reason. people sit back and they're like, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make that happen. And then they fucking, they, they don't even, they've never managed a million dollars. They've yeah. never managed their own like million dollars, but they're like, oh yeah, I managed 20 million or something over here. Right. And it's like, it's like, but how much money of that do you have? Involved? Do you have? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's really what it came down to. So that's how. I'm transitioning for, to the asset management because to answer your question, yeah, I did own all of them and I still do. I'm trying to scale back, simplify, and then, you know, revamp the whole entire thing through the management side. The but I'm day, not a broker. That's yeah. another thing. And that's why I can create such a great experience because I learned, I had to learn the hard way not to offer things that you don't have because the way that I do things and how I run my company may not be how somebody else does. And I feel like you run into a lot of those out in this entrepreneur space in the world is like everybody is trying to pretend like they have something that they don't and like they're selling you things that they're right. basically just brokering or wholesaling and mm-hmm. it just ruins the whole experience. Love that. I love that. So um, like I, everyone, everyone asks me to make videos all the mm-hmm. time of like what a day in the life looks like. Right. I get that fucking every day. What is it? What is it? So to everyone, what does a day in the life look like for you? If I could paint the perfect picture, it would be like, you know, I wake up to a million missed calls. (laughs) It's like people don't even wake up. uh, Now I've been waking up at 4 a.m. Jeez. Uh, Yes. I've been getting dragged out of bed. My wife wakes me up at that. Like I'm not a morning person. I used to be, but now I thrive at night. So it's like I got to force myself to go to sleep, but then I don't want to wake up, but I need to because like I have to. I've been working on that life balance, like allocating my time a lot more wisely. So if I know that like I have to be done at four o'clock, I'm going to be motivated to get up early and do what I need to do. Sometimes it's something I get that because like sometimes like like for me, like today, like I knew I had a lot to do. Yeah. But I was trying to be done by a certain time. So I was like, OK, let me get up earlier. Get yeah, it holds you accountable. It like that's what is so important about having a schedule. If you don't have a schedule, you know, you're going to get you're going to be less efficient. Like yes. Efficiency is everything. And the best way to do that is by having a schedule. Do you see that? Uh, what's going on right now about Rob Deerdeck, how he, uh, he built, I think he's built like seven plus companies to over a hundred million dollars, um, worked out every day. And this is like the last 10 years and did, did a few of these things while still spending uh, 30% of his time with his family. Wow. That's amazing. That's a goal. And like, that's impressive. Like, like I could not imagine building that many. And he has some really good systems. Oh, and, and he records, um, ridiculousness. 
Still? Still recording ridiculous. Oh, wow. Crazy. I think it was like, it was like, that's like amazing. Some right crazy there. amount of episodes. I don't remember. You'd have to look it up. Don't quote me on it. But I just saw it and it really impressed me. And I was like, holy shit. He's you mastered imagine? his craft. Yeah. Yep. And like, that's one thing also about like um, Mark Wahlberg. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to miss out time with his family stuff. So he wakes up at 4 a.m. to work out every morning. Yeah. So that he can be done working out, showered, and ready to go while his, while his, uh, yeah. kid, like, you kid, have family, to. whatever it is, are waking up. Yeah. So to my day in the life is waking up. I try not to look at my phone at all because as soon as I see those problems, I want to solve them. Yeah. So I just, I wake up, I work out first thing in the morning. Like we're at the gym by 5 a.m. Working out and then we come home. And this is another thing that was a blessing in disguise is having, allowing my wife to get two dogs because you got to walk them at a certain time. They're toy poodles. So they're super needy and bougie. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to walk them at a certain time. So that holds me accountable. So as soon as we get home, we walk them and then it's just grind. So I try to structure out like the most important things in the mornings. Cause after I hit lunch, like I'm like, Done. All right, yeah, like, oh, yeah all right. I'm the same way. So I try to get, and then being on the West coast and 90% of my clientele being on the East coast is oh. another thing. So I have to basically be done with everything by one o'clock. Interesting. So I try to do, you know, like my calls, my super important task all before lunchtime. And then the rest of the day is basically getting ready for the next day. I have a question for you. And this is just because I want a personal question. Um, yeah. What is, what is like like food consumption looks like for you? Like diet wise? I because, think as, I, because I'm very serious. When you run on a that. business, like it's hard to eat, but you have to force yourself. Right? So like that's like something that's very important. Like like I like I fast like all yeah. the time. I, I make sure I try not to eat as much. Mm -hmm. Um protein shakes, little stuff like that. Like what is that for you? Like what Same. does that look like for you? I definitely say a lot of I, I try to do like eggs, like get something protein in the morning. Even though I'm not really a breakfast eater, but yeah, I don't like breakfast either, but I try to drink either like a shake and a lot of protein in the morning and then a light lunch because I'm just like anything heavy is going to put me out and I'm going to be I'm ready be, for a nap. Yeah, I'm going to be right. ready, tired, just sluggish, not wanting to get, you know, much done, put it off till tomorrow. So I do like a salad and then super heavy dinner. I love like, that. So, so like I'm very I, besides the breakfast I mm -hmm. might do a protein shake in the morning that's if I work out early yeah. in the morning um and even if sometimes even if I work out I just don't do it and that's like very important and the reason I want to talk about that is because so many people nowadays they get up and they eat this such a fucking heavy breakfast and then mm -hmm. they wonder why they can't they're not productive throughout the day right and the fact that you know I see it in a very common is a lot of people like I like to fast until like like two o'clock ish. Yeah. Like I don't eat anything. If I do, it'll be a protein shake. Simply that's about maybe right. a piece of fruit. And then about between like one and three, I would say, mm -hmm. like I like to eat like, like, like a meat, just yeah. protein, like eggs, chicken, cheese, start beef, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then for dinner, then I'll have something a little heavier because it like what you're doing is you don't realize, but what you're doing by the food consumption and controlling the food mm -hmm. is you're controlling your mood as well. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's like, that's facts right there. That's what it's called by like planning out things is because like that's really in all honesty what it takes, mm -hmm. especially as an entrepreneur. You have to plan out like even to the where you're eating. Yeah, you have to be super structured. Because I'm telling you right now, like if I have a meeting at three and at 12 o'clock, I go get some some wings from like Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that meeting. It ain't I'm happening. Sorry. I'm sorry. We had an emergency. Anthony is tired. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're getting, I'm getting out of here. I'm right. getting out of here. I ain't doing that. No, that's, I love that's, that. So, in uh, there's so many challenges in mm -hmm. this space. What what are you finding to be the biggest one? Um, definitely, like I said, having that balance and not being as accessible to everybody. Um, that's a big one, and being selfish in a good way. I okay. think no, like, yes. When you're an entrepreneur, especially one who is like has a good heart, you're trying to help everybody. And um, you're, you know, everybody, then people start coming to you for help. Like when they realize, okay, he's the person to help me Yep. and you don't want to say no to people. So like learning how to say no a lot more is like the, been something the, the that people I have to pleaser. practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And it's not like, I'm not even a people pleaser, but I am at the same yeah. time. Like I stand, you know, tall on my morals, but at the same time, like I just, I want to help as many people as I can. Like, I feel like that's what being a leader is, but mm -hmm. you have to. You have to be selective. In in leading, sometimes it's telling people no. Yeah. Being the people pleaser, being the person that you know, you can say, "Hey, 
figure it out, like that's a big deal. Yeah, like, that's it's a, like, like some you have to you you have to remove the pacifier from a lot of people's mouths. Like yep. I've handicapped a lot of people by helping them. And I started I realizing that. the more people I tell no, like they start saying, oh, I figured it out. And I'm like, oh, good, you know, like can wipe the sweat off my forehead. Like, you know, that's hard for me, but it's, it's becoming easier. Yeah. It, and it feels good, like telling people no. <laughs> I love that. So when um, you said these are some challenges that you're facing and going through right now, mm -hmm. um, how are you weaving through them? Because like, like what are you doing? Because like these are some challenges that I've been through lately, mm -hmm. too like, you know, time management and stuff like that? Like, how are you weaving through them? Uh, I mean, really, I just pray and I don't stress about things as much. Like, I just, I give every single day. I take things day by day, minute by minute now, instead of I've always been the person that's like just trying to think of the whole entire plan 24-7. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I'm gauging my success on where, like, I feel that I should be instead of where I'm at right now. And then that'll stunt my growth because I'm just like so focused on the losses that I've taken or why I'm not where I want to be at. And I'm not focusing on like just, OK, let me just give it 100 percent today and tomorrow's a new day. And, you know, I'll see what happens then. You know? yep, I feel that because I can promise you that fire is going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. And that's I, it took me a long time to realize that like. Like, I've started recently, like, just shutting my phone off and, like... Yeah, you got to. Forgetting about it. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Yeah. And, like, so I've had, like, a I heard something great, and I've come to realize it, and it was that... Uh, it was actually related to being, like, septic. And they said, you know, like, you're always praying and asking for God to stop the pain and suffering, but you don't realize that that's what's keeping you, that's what's saving you, you know? And, like, where that relates to it is, like, when you become septic, you go to sleep, and then that's when you die. Like, your little burst or something. I love that one. So it's, like, being aware and feeling that pain and continuing to push through the challenges and all the obstacles that you have is what's going to help you actually accomplish your goal. That's 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 a good one. I like that because yeah, that's so, so true. Because yeah. how many like how many times you're just like ah, like yeah, every everyone. That's why I think people. Um, I'm gonna say like 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 for me like I had a number in, in mind. Yeah. If I made that much money, I'd be fine. So I can make that for the rest of my life, and then that number increased, and that number increased, yeah. and that number increased, and it kept increasing, start, increasing, like, increasing, increasing, your increasing, increasing. And like trying to and you never be creating those yeah. problems though for me was like. The best thing I've always said, like every every human when their backs against the wall, mm -hmm. they're gonna figure it the fuck out. Like yeah. that's my rule number one. That's my number one thing I always say. Motto: yeah. You'll figure it the fuck out. Yeah. So I like that. That's a cool one. No, that's that is important. So I'm gonna ask you something, and uh, I want to ask you this in like a like a I mean this in a way of like, what is your most like successful like how do I wanna, how do I want to word this? What is your most successful like lesson in a, in a period of time and the reason like like let's say like let's say 30 days and the reason i say that is like because a lot of people will come in and say like oh that's money like i made this much money in a month or whatever and that's like my successful moment no what is that most successful like lesson and it could be money for you it could be like but like was it buying that first car was it buying that first anything um, whatever yeah well like okay successful i've had like the best lesson as of recently, this might answer your question, was like one thing that I've struggled with, and it was something that I didn't realize though, was, you know, like I had, I had everything that I wanted, I was doing great, but I had to learn, you know, like humility. Not that like I just thought I could step on everybody and I was the best thing, but it isn't like in a deeper way. But, you know, like now, that's like been my most su successful moment in my business as, as of yet. Love it's that. like being, you know, having humility and realizing like it's OK to fail. It's OK to, you know, go through things um, and to just, you know, kind of be. I, I've always been the loudest person in the room, not like by choice, but it's like everybody's always depended on me mm -hmm. to create the vibe, to keep it lively. And it's just like sometimes I just got to chill. Like sometimes the most progress is stillness. You got to let Love things that. just happen. Um, but like in my business was probably like just realizing like when I got to like 40 cars, it was like, whoa, like I went. That's epic. Yeah. But it was, it was my most successful moment, but like my biggest setback too, because I scaled too fast. Ah. And I didn't realize it. Like I had numbers like, okay, I want to get to 15. Then I want to get to 20. 
and I got to 40, but I never built like those systems. I never built the right people. I, did, I couldn't even fulfill at that level. Like I wanted to get to a level that I wasn't ready for. And like that was, that was a success because but that I was a humbling moment to recover from it. Yeah. You know, some people get there too late and, and they can't fix they it. They don't have time on their hand or they don't know how to get out of it. Yep. So. I love that. So what is your goals? What's your goals for the future? And I'm going to, I'm going to get you back on here in, if, in, you know, six months to a year. We're going to yeah. talk about your goals. See if you, hey, I love see if you it. hit them. But my goals are to expand internationally and like okay. continue to build what I'm building here um, from the core and just keep expanding, expanding until like I'm the apple of the luxury in t- like luxury space. Like I want to be when you Yachts, think of your planes, I, I, I want to take a jet or I want to book a house or I want to book a car like everybody automatically thinks of my company. Awesome. Do you have any you, do you have any plans on like building apps and anything like yeah, that? Yeah, definitely or? building an app. Like everything that I've been doing is still in the plan. Like mm-hmm. I like I did a crypto last year. It was called Royal Riches and like I've transitioned that to just continuing to be more like a lifestyle for people. So like that's going to be my app. It's just going to be Royal Riches. R- Royal Riches and then Love that. People are going to be able to book anything and everything from there. Luxury cuz that's my lane. Like People ask, like, do you have any economy cars? Do you have it? No, like, I'm just, I've learned to just stick to what I do best, and, like, yep. that's okay. I don't need to get everything. I don't need to make a yeah. piece of every single pie. Yep. Like, I'm just cool with doing what I like to do and what I'm good at. And you stick with your, you know, you, if, you, if you can eat your pie, you're good. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Do you have any messages to the audience? Like, messages to them, just, like, entrepreneurship advice? financial advice, just any advice, just, just lay it raw, that camera yeah. right there. I would say spit the facts. I would say like uh, learning when to let go. Cause you know, everybody's preaching never give up, but that doesn't mean never let go. Like some things you have to let go of, whether that's people, whether that's things or whether that's like a concept in your head. Um, sometimes you have to let go of old ideas to gain new, new success. Love so that. I think like that's the biggest thing because everybody is preaching and teaching people to do anything and everything and to never give up on certain things. And sometimes you got to give, you got to know. Up. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. So, well, that's, that's, that's about it guys. That was a fucking banger. This man yeah. spits fucking knowledge. Just, Hey, I appreciate he, you I actually, there was a few times I was like, I was like, y'all catch that? Like, go ahead and quote <laughs> that one down. Go ahead and mark that. I We're going to put that one in a reel. Yeah. <laughs> that one's going <laughs> in a reel. Hey, but know, I appreciate you coming you, on, man. Thank that's, you guys for having me. Yeah, man. This is, this is awesome. So um, real quick, once again, um, where can people find you on pr- all platforms? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at Zay underscore Hampton. Zay Bannister on Facebook. I don't really use it much. And then Royal Reynolds. You know, that's like the main one. Do you have, a, do you have a YouTube or anything? Yeah, so it's called Royal Lifestyle. So I'm still building it out, but definitely like subscribe because I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on it. That's awesome. Yeah, we just started recently focusing on YouTube and it's powerful. Yeah, it is. It's powerful. Yeah, I think that's another thing. Like I felt like I was too late. Like, never let nah. me, like I never wanted to get started. I'm like, oh, like YouTube no. is like, you know. No, no, no. Get started. Way. I challenge you to get started on YouTube. All right. That's my challenge to you. All right. Then I'm going to take you up on that. I love it. I love it. We'll, we'll see who gets to 100,000 first. All right. Let's do it. A race to 100,000. <laughs> let's right. go. I love it. Uh, I love it, man. That That's called friendly competition. We're, and, we're, and I'm going to support. I'll be a subscriber. I'm going to subscribe. That's yeah, that's just what it is. Too. I love it. So please, please don't forget to like, comment, Definitely and share this video yeah. also turn the notification bell on because we're dropping these episodes all the fucking time pretty much every week um and just share this because we want to get this out there more to more entrepreneurs we want to be able to teach you give this man a follow and if you are anywhere in the local area as well or yeah. east coast yeah, yeah we got miami orlando on oh, miami go to miami baby yeah. <laughs> yeah. go to so, miami i love that nice. hit this man up and he can get you taken care of yeah that being said Peace. Hey. Start we stop, we go, we go get it done. Get it when we start, we go get it done. Start when we stop, we go, we go get it done. Anthony's rum.